Hi guys, Peter Finch here, and you join me down at the beautiful Thorpe Ness. And I'm gonna be doing a video today on some simple hacks if you are sculling or you are duffing your chip. If you are new to the channel, guys, make sure that you hit that subscribe button, that like button, and hop down into the comments below and let everyone know what you've worked on to help with the fat and the thin chips. Now, the first simple hack that we need to be looking at is actually what club that you are playing when you're hitting these chip shots, because that is gonna have a massive impact on the technique that you are then able to use. Now, very simply, I have a chip shot here which has a very slight rise up onto the green, and then I've got a fair amount of room to work with so i have an option here of hitting my 60 degree my 54 degree and my 50 degree but here's the key how do you actually select which shot is correct for you so the simplest way of assessing any shot but particularly a chip shot is talk through what your options are so here are my options i have a slope here which starts basically before the green leads up and i don't really want to be pitching into that i don't know how it's going to react and then i've got a pretty flat surface once I actually get up onto the green. Now, the reason that's important is I can bypass this part of my shot to make my eventual shot much easier. But please bear in mind, this is gonna be very different based on ground conditions, what's in front of me, if I'm hitting over a bunker, for example, all these things need to be factored into the count. Now, this is pretty simple, basic stuff. And yet, and yet, how many times do you get over a chip shot, you look down at your ball, and then you think, you know what? I'm not sure this is the right club. But do you go back to your bag and change? Absolutely not, because you don't want to waste time and you don't want to look a fool in front of your mates. So this is where the club selection happens. Over the ball, looking at the target, make sure you've got the right one. Now for the shot, I need to get it up onto the green and then running. If I hit 50 degrees, it's probably going to come out too fast. The 60 degrees too much. So I've got my 54 degree wedge. Now the second hack you need to understand is how to nail your setup position. Now for this particular type of shot with my 54 degree wedge, I want to be playing a chip and run style. Now that means it's going to be coming out, landing, and then rolling. But the biggest mistake that I see so many golfers make is by putting the ball miles back in their stance, shoving their hands miles ahead, and rather than actually using the bounce on a wedge is by lifting it up very quickly with the wrists and then jabbing the club down into the ground behind the ball to hit that duff. Another issue that many golfers have is when they get themselves set up and as they come through they try and lean back to actually get the ball up and onto the green. And if you are one of those golfers this is what I want you to bear in mind. If you are someone who fats and thins, your spine angle generally will change within your chipping stroke. What's gonna happen is you get yourself set up, sternum over the ball, and then as you start to come through the ball, that spine angle will generally start to tilt back more as you start to help it up. So rather than having a rotational movement within the chipping stroke, you will have more of a bending motion away from the target. So this basic setup, ball position is just inside the right heel. I'm gonna put about 70% of weight on my front foot and my sternum position, I'm gonna keep just ahead of the ball. That's because I want my ball to be hit first and then the bruising of the ground afterwards. Remember, I'm not leading with the hands here. What I'm doing is rotating the body through. I'm using the bounce and I'm letting the club skim along the surface after the ball. My hands are just ahead of the ball. It's not a huge lean with the shaft. I don't wanna be leading too much. I'm in this position and rather than tilting back, I'm gonna keep my spine angle very constant and I'm gonna turn my body back and through. And like I said, I do not wanna be jabbing down at the ball. I wanna be rotating and letting that ball be collected on the way through. Just doing my aim a little bit further off to the right hand side, rotating back and through, maintaining spine angle. Oh, sod. So I mentioned it a moment ago, but collecting the golf ball rather than hitting the ball first and then a massive amount of turf. Now, the reason why this is important is because how the wedge is designed. Now, a wedge basically is made up of three parts. Well, in this version, it's made up of three parts. You've got the club face, you've got the leading edge, and then you've got the sole. Now, the difference between the bottom of the sole and the leading edge, that is the bounce angle. So Gene Sarazen invented this decades and decades ago to help get him out of bunkers. But what it also allows a golfer to do is use that bounce angle to slide the club underneath the ball, collect it on the club face, and get a large amount of spin, even when chipping. And a nice way to get the sensation is literally to get into the setup we just spoke about, or get that rotation, not that dipping back and through, and get that club just skimming across the surface pretty much where the ball would be. 
Now, a nice little visual that you can also use here is to actually imagine that there's three balls in a line. And your job is to try and collect all three as you actually move that club through. Now, that might sound a little bit weird at first. And actually, some of the first shots that you're going to hit, I imagine that you might just catch the ground a little bit before the ball. But if you use the bounce angle correctly and you have that setup where you have that little bit of weight forward and all the rest of it, that leading edge will still be sliding underneath the ball. Let me show you what I mean. So getting in that same setup position, getting the feeling that I'm collecting the ball as I come through. So ball position just back of center, 60, 70% weight forward, 65, 70% weight forward. Those hands just ahead of the ball as well. And I'm gonna be rotating back and through, imagining that I'm collecting those balls on the way. Oh, that would have been nice. <laughs> so with these techniques, practice them, hone them, understand how to use the bounce and how to rotate rather than lean back. But there is another option as well. And that's switch up the clubs that you use. Don't just rely on the wedges. And a shot which is fantastic for many golfers is using a five wood. Now, this is a great shot if you're up against like a little bit of a collar of the rough. That's because the sole plate of a five wood or a three will glide through and doesn't get snagged up because of the weights rounded off. What it also does, it allows a player to use this club almost like a putter. So gripping it a long way down the shaft, getting the ball position quite central and then turning the body back and through. It allows the ball to jump off with just a little bit more pace, a little bit more energy, and then roll out towards your intended target line. So the setup here is very simple. Ball position here, I'm getting in the center of my stance. I believe this just moves a little bit right to left, this one. I'm not gonna put much weight forward here, just gonna put a little bit of bias on that left side, nothing more than that. And I'm just gonna use my shoulders back and through. I'm gonna keep this all together. Remember, this is not a rock, this is a rotation back and through. And let's see if we can get it rolling down towards that target. And for a lot of people who are nervous over this type of shot, it allows just that little bit more impetus to be put on the ball. It allows it to get to the target much, much easier. Set up again, a little bit more right to left there. Not as much right or left. Ooh, not too bad at all. Uh, best one so far, I think that. Right guys, thank you so, so much for watching these very simple hacks on how you can improve your chipping and stop duffing and thinning the golf ball. If you are new to the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that like button, and remember to comment below on anything that has helped you out with your own chipping issues. Just want to say a big thank you to Thorpe Ness for allowing me to come down and film on this beautiful James Braid course. It's right on the Suffolk coast. If you ever are in the area, make sure that you check it out. It is well, well worth a visit. So guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time.